Hello, I'm Fiona McLean, Head of English at Bab Lake School and Teacher of English Literature. And I'm going to start by telling you what English means to me and why I think you should choose it for A-level. I'll start with a quotation by Thomas Carlyle. So he was a 19th century historian and essayist. And what he said about books was this. In books lies the soul of the whole past time. The articulate, audible voice of the past when the body and material substance of it has altogether vanished like a dream. And what that means to me is that when the person who has written this literature is gone, when the pen and paper they used to do it is long vanished, what they have left us with is their work. And that work is something that's really important, and I'll tell you why in a moment. So, why choose English literature? Does this sound like you? It goes without saying that we need to love novels, plays, poetries of all time periods. And here are some of those time periods that we're going to look at. You also need that this here to be true of you. I'm interested in how people have responded and continue to respond to major developments in history and the present day. So, for example, life in medieval England. We know so much about this because of Chaucer. The women's rights movement, Christina Rossetti tells us all about the plight of the woman in 19th century England. Threats and loyalty to the English crown, we learn so much about this from Richard III. All of these things need to be at the heart of your desire to study English literature, the desire to find out how people at that time and since have responded to crucial moments in our history. So, in a more practical sense, we're thinking about universities and we're thinking about employers. What they want from you is impressive analytical thinking skills. They want sophisticated vocabulary, accurate writing, someone who is informed and cultured. This all means that English literature provides a great foundation for so many degree subjects, such as law, philosophy, history, psychology, politics, so many. Two of last year's upper sixth English literature students have even gone on to study medicine. So the course at Bab Lake, I'll give you a little summary of this. We follow the new OCR English literature specification and this will tell you a bit about what that entails. So we start with Shakespeare, some teachers will do Richard III with you, some will do The Tempest, it depends on the teacher's choice. We have drama and poetry, and that's comparative. So you might be studying Henrik Ibsen's A Doll's House. You might be comparing that with Chaucer. You might be comparing that with the poetry of Christina Rossetti. We also have a chosen study area for paper two, and our chosen study area is American literature. So you'll be studying a lot of that, and you'll also respond to an unseen passage as well. Finally, we've got some coursework. So for this course, it's 20% coursework, and you need to be doing two different essays. One is comparative, the other is more creative. There is a lot of freedom with that, and we want you to choose something that you are interested with in, sorry, but your teachers will guide you. So this is a question we often get asked. What is the difference between language and literature A-level and can I do both or should I do both? And the answer is yes, you can and yes, you should. So English literature A-level is similar to what you will have done at GCSE. The difference is that it's more in-depth and also you need to look at different interpretations now. You might look at critical journal articles from literary scholars. You might look to see how a particular character has been portrayed on stage historically. English language is more like a social science, and in that sense, it's different from your GCSE. It's also very different from the English literature A-level. As a social science, you would be looking at language and gender. You'd be looking at language and power, how children acquire language from nothing. And for that reason, it's different enough from the English literature A-level that we absolutely recommend doing both if you want to. When making your choice, though, the best advice I can give to you is to choose English literature if you're going to love it, if you love texts, if you love the intricacies of how those texts are put together and discussing what those texts can mean for us in the present day. And I'll finish with a quotation by Maya Angelou, who is a very, very well-known poet. She says, when I look back, I am so impressed again with the life-giving power of literature. 
If I were a young person today trying to gain a sense of myself in the world, I would do that again by reading just as I did when I was young. And what I think that means is that these works of literature give us so much insight into different pockets of society, different periods of history that we can't tap into otherwise, that we can't tap into until somebody with first-hand knowledge of that area of society, of that time in history, can tell us all about it. And that, in turn, helps us to discover a sense of ourself and our place in the world around us too. So if you think that is something that you are interested in, then please study English literature for A-level. Thank you.